And welcome to FPL, mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan, and today I'm getting a little bit angsty about the upcoming FPL game. I'm sure you guys are missing it a lot too. So I thought we'd jump straight in and uh, do some price predictions for this upcoming season with some of the big players of the game. But guys, I cannot do this alone, so I've brought in a friend to help me this uh, this uh, day. So welcome to the channel, FPL Fran. Fran, how are you doing today, my friend? Well, thank you for having me on the channel. I'm doing great. Hope you're doing well, well too. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. It's nice and sunny in England, so I think everyone's in good spirits indeed. Um, yeah, so Fran is uh, an FPL YouTuber as well. We're going to link his channel at the top of the description. Uh, make sure you do go check him out if you do get an opportunity. Uh, Fran, you finished uh, top 10k last season, is that right? Yeah, around about 8k. Pretty, pretty impressive stuff. So, yeah, we're in good hands today, guys. Trust me. So, uh, yeah, let's jump straight in and start predicting some of the prices for the big players in FPL. So, let's start off with Mo Salah. So, uh, I'm going to go first, and I'm going to tell you that I am predicting Mo Salah to come in at 12.5 million. No uh, change here. I don't think he's been a very consistent uh, performer, a consistent kind of player. I think they got his price about right last season, and I think we're going to see a uh, return of him being uh, that kind of premium price as a midfielder Fran what do you think to that one yeah total agreement with you there I mean Salah's been 12.5 for two out of five seasons and he's had 230 sort of around point finishes in, in multiple years and 12.5 is, is the price I think that they think they're comfortable with Yep, absolutely agreed. No real change there. And uh, we are going to go through all these players. And I want you guys in the comments to let us know who you think has got it right. So far, me and Fran are in agreement. But uh, maybe there will be some disagreements further down the line. Let us know who you think has got it spot on and who you think is maybe making a mistake. So uh, next up, Alexis McAllister. Um, I don't know what we think about Alexis McAllister since his move to Liverpool. I think he's going to be around 7 million. I think they're going to pump up his price just that little bit just because he has had that transfer to a big team often when players play for the bigger teams uh, the most kind of successful teams in the Premier League over the last several years we do see a significant price increase so McAllister up to 7 million what do you think Fran? Yeah I'm actually pretty close with you I, I'm 7.5 for Mac 10 I compared it to Wijnaldum joining from Newcastle a couple years back after he had 11 goals in a season uh, the big difference of course is McAllister is the penalty taker for Brighton and I don't see Salah giving up the penalty um, to McAllister so for that reason I think 7.5 is fair as that Liverpool premium is still pretty strong in FPL. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, quick question on McAllister. Do you think he is going to be worth getting into your team at 7 million 7.5 million that kind of range? Honestly, no. I think if you look at his returns this year, a lot of them were penalties. He's probably still going to play in that sort of left center mid position. And I'm just not anticipating that we're going to get triple Liverpool that far early into the game. Yeah, a total agreement. I know a lot of people will be looking at shiny new toys. That's always a thing in FPL at the start of the season. But yeah, McAllister, maybe not such good value for money uh, this se this upcoming season as he was perhaps at periods of time last season. But we have got another Brighton man to talk about, and that is Kaoru Mitoma. Uh, I think think uh he's probably gonna have a price increase as well i think we're gonna be looking at seven million the success of him the success of brighton as well last season is maybe gonna push some of those players up to the slightly higher kind of price ranges i think kind of the likes of you know wilf zaha uh you know jack grealish at aston villa i think mitoma is gonna be kind of in that kind of bracket of midfielders this season at seven million what do you think yeah, I'm actually in total agreement with you there. I think the PhD of dribbling is going to end up at 7 million as well. He had a red hot start with a Zerbi, but ultimately still less points than someone like a March. And for that reason, because he cooled off near the end, I do think he's going to be priced around 7. Yeah, I think that's a, a pre reasonably good price for him as well. I feel like I could consider him at 7 million. Um, I expect Solly March to be a little bit cheaper though. So if Solly March comes in at 6 million, 6.5, just that little bit cheaper, who would you prefer to go for? Yeah, 100%. I think I would be going for March at this point. I was pretty lucky to actually avoid um, the non-controversial goal that March had scored, but didn't actually get an FPL. So um, probably looking to actually get his goals next season. 
yeah, I, I didn't I didn't avoid that one. I, I had to march captain in that game week. But <laughs> I, I've been told <laughs> I've been told on this channel that I'm not allowed to talk about that anymore because uh, maybe I spoke about it a little too much <laughs> at the time. So we'll we'll move on to the next season and try and uh, put that pain behind us, I guess. But yeah, Calderon Mitzema, seven million. I think that yeah, something around there is probably about right for him. Uh, but I'm expecting Martinelli on the other hand uh, to be a, a player who could be increased in price potentially potentially out of uh, the range of a lot of us you know could be a little bit too expensive uh, especially when you consider some of the other midfielders Arsenal have but I think Martinelli is going to go up to 8 million from 6.5 last season so a 1.5 million price increase I think is going to be about right for him without completely pricing him out of the game uh, but ma certainly making us think about whether we can afford to go for him or not so uh, Martinelli 8 million do you think I've got that one right? I mean, I, I agree there's a price increase coming, but I've actually gone a little bit more controversial with a 9 million price predicted for Martinelli. I, I just think he had an exceptional season, still actually got a lot of minutes despite that sort of notion of Trossard coming in and adding a lot of rotation to that team. And because he had such a stellar year and was a top five mid, I'm predicting him to be priced at nine. That, that is that is expensive. That is truly <laughs> expensive. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. We're going to talk about Saka and Erdegaard later in the video and maybe kind of compare some of those guys. But uh, yeah, nine million. It, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, <laughs> it could happen. Is he worth it? Would would you pick Martinelli at nine? Honestly, probably not. But. I think it's because this Arsenal team have improved so much and I would compare it to United players in years past where you're seeing players like Bruno and Rashford who've been priced around 9 to 10. And yeah, because I expect Arsenal to, to be as good as they were this season. Again, I do think um, it is fair to price them up that, that high. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you make some good points. Uh, Martinelli kind of performing almost at that premium level uh, last season. He's, he was certainly a really good pick. So, yeah, maybe that will be justified. Okay, Marcus Rashford up next. Uh, I'm going to say 9 million. So similar to what you've kind of said about Martinelli uh, there. Uh, I think Rashford, 9 million, just a little bit cheaper, a uh, little bit more expensive than the Arsenal guys, I think. Uh, for, for Rashford uh, obviously a fantastic season for him became pretty much essential as a pick so he does need to be priced accordingly does need to have almost just sneak try and get him closer to that premium price without him quite falling into that category so 9 million for me yeah I've gone for Rashford at 9.5 he's had a 17 goal season before um, but he was also priced at 9.5 the next season he's not on penalties but he had exceptional underlying stats, um, especially as a goal threat for this United team. And I really expect them to reinforce in this window and for Rashford to still be that sort of main man. So 9.5 for me. Yeah, that that could be a, a really, really, really interesting uh, pick at, at that kind of price. Like, I, I feel like there's going to be so many players we had last season that we've completely taken for granted that we were able to fit in Martinelli and, uh, you know, uh, and Rashford and Calder Mitama and, and Erling Haaland at a big price as well. Um, if Rashford and Martinelli and the likes of these players all get these massive price hikes, we are going to have these kind of questions of who we can have and who we can't. We can't have them all anymore. So, uh, yeah, Martinelli versus Rashford. If you could pick one at the prices we've spoken about today, which one would you go for? I think I'd have to go with Rashford, to be honest. Okay. All right. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I can see why. I can see why. Uh, let's move on to Kieran Trippier, who is definitely going to get a significant price increase. Definitely there. Uh, I'm going to say that he should probably be about 6.5 million. I think he has to be minimum 6 million. There's no way he could be 5 million like he was last season. Uh, a kind of slow end to the season for Trippier, but we saw what he can offer. We saw the value of the Newcastle defence and Trippier on set pieces and his creativity. Got to be a premium defender now so 6.5 for me Fran what do you think uh, look I'm gonna agree there's a huge price increase coming for Trippier but I've, I've gone even I'm more ambitious for a seven that's Robertson's price in previous seasons and Robertson is actually someone who has diminished I would say in quality compared to someone like Trent in, in years past and we know that this Liverpool defense has been quite poor so they're probably projected to drop but Trippier is playing for a team where he's absolutely nailed. As you say, he's on the set pieces and they do look like a very stellar defense. And I, I can't see that not being the case next season. So I'm going for seven. 
Seven million. That that is a that is a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Do you think he's worth seven million if you compare him to the likes of you know Trent Alexander Arnold? Uh, you know maybe some of the other. But if we get you know some six billion Man City defenders, things like that. Do you think he's worth seven million? I think he is, but he's not going to be, you know, that sort of 100% owned player that we saw this season. Maybe some people will be actually going to someone like a Fabian Schaar instead to try and get a little bit of that goal threat, but at a much cheaper price. That's a really good point. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, like, I think you've kind of hit the nail on the head there. The fact that Trippier was owned by, you know, 60, 70, 80% of players overall, pretty much like 95% owned in the top 100k pretty much all season, uh, it just shows that, his price does need to be significantly <laughs> altered to reflect that. So, yeah, perhaps we're going to see that. Okay, Harry Kane. And this is an interesting one. Some people say Harry Kane might move abroad and not even be in FPL. Some people think that maybe he moves to Manchester United. But let's assume that he stays at Spurs. I think that's the most likely outcome of the lot. Uh, I think Harry Kane is going to have a price increase, of course. Uh, I'm going to put him at 12 million, though. So slightly below Mo Salah. Um, yeah, I think that's maybe about right. You could maybe push him up slightly. Would you push him up further than 12 million? Well, I mean, it's consistent with what I've been doing so far. So yeah, I would yes. push him up to 12.5. And he has been priced at 12.5 before. Another great season in the end. Super consistent. Nothing crazy in terms of mega holes, but I just think if he stays at Spurs and all things are the same, why not price him at 12.5? Hmm, that's a lot of money to spend on a player who you perhaps wouldn't necessarily be captaining, especially yep. if you've kind of, I don't know, maybe I don't know, maybe a lot of people will be losing faith in Spurs uh, next season after, you know, managerial changes and kind of, I, I don't know, I, I don't know how they're going to start off the season. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting, if nothing else. Uh, if Harry Kane were to move to Manchester United, would that change your opinion on his price? I think I'd stay the same at 12.5. I imagine he'd probably get much better chance quality, but I'd also have to weigh up whether he actually gets penalties if if I was to pick him on game week one. So that sort of um, consideration of whether Bruno's still a good asset or, or that weakens Kane as an asset is, is something interesting for me. That's a really, really interesting point, to be fair, because that could pretty much kill Bruno Fernandes as an FPL option, um, but at the same time make Harry Kane into a almost a must have i feel like i'd be more likely to pick him if he was at manchester united but at the same time i don't know if that would really impact his price necessarily so a bit of a weird one a bit of a weird one all right let's uh let's finish off with the, the player that you guys have probably all been waiting for in this video that i strategically put uh midway through the video so so you guys had something to look forward to you didn't click off the video too early let's talk about erling Haaland, the man himself the robot the machine the uh, triple uh trophy man at this point just won the champions league of course uh I think we're going to see a price increase. I think everyone agrees that he has to increase in price. But I would only go as far as to say 13 million. Um, I'm going to let you say your price, Fran, before I give my justification. So what, what do you think of Erling Haaland? 13 million or more? Yeah, I'm going to have to go more again. I think 13.5 is fair because you have to sort of contextualize that near the end of the season. He didn't really have many games to play and, and they weren't so important. So he probably didn't have the most complete FPL tally and therefore it hasn't br broken any records there. But because he, when you expect him to start at, at the beginning of the season and play all those games out for 90 minutes or even at least 65 where they hopefully would have a huge lead, I think Holland is, is going to be priced well at 13.5. That would be big. I, I can't remember the last time we had a player start the game at that kind of price. And I've seen players end at 13.5 Salah, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, but to start at 13.5, like that's a... That's a throwback, really, to, uh, to, to years <laughs> gone by. Uh, the reason I don't think Haaland will go quite as high as 13.5 is because I think that uh, FPL is a game, and I know people will disagree with this, and let's have some uh, comments about this in the chat. Uh, I think... If we are to sit here and say uh, how much is Erling Haaland actually worth before you know he becomes uh, an option rather than a, a must-have player, we do need to be pushing his price up to 14 million, 14.5, maybe even 15 million. You guys are probably still going to pick him even at that price. So therefore, that is how much he's worth technically, right? Uh, I mean, Fran, for example, uh, you are 100% going for Erling Haaland at 13.5 million, right? Yeah, yeah, no okay. question. 
Okay, so at what price would that 100% pick rate drop to 99% for you? Uh, for you, you to go, all right, I'm not 100% sure anymore. I'm 99% sure. Yeah, I think 14 is where it becomes 99%. Any higher than that, and, and I might really have to switch it up. Yeah, okay. So that's so that is probably how much he is worth. But FPL won't price him that high because um, FPL, you've got to remember at the end of the day, their biggest interest is getting as many people to play FPL as possible and making the game accessible and making, uh, and we've kind of seen this the last year or so, where they've priced players really, really generously in order to just allow people to build their you know ultimate team, pretty much pick all of their favourite players without really having to cut corners because it's easier to play FPL that way. It's easier to play FPL when you don't have to do the research and find those of those cheap players, find those differential players um so for the for the fpl nerds like uh myself like yourself fran no offense none taken i hope <laughs> none of course okay um everyone watches this video as well like we are nerds let's, let's be honest and we want holland to be a player who is kind of a player who you're not sure if you're going to pick him or not but <sighs> fpl the, the, the fpl towers are not going to think that way they're going to they're going to make him so everyone can afford him and an amazing team as well so uh yeah, I can't see him going to those mega prices that some people have been predicting. Uh, so yeah, guys, let us know in the uh, in the in the comments what is the highest price uh, you would pick Erling Haaland at? Is it fourteen million, like uh, Fran says, where you start to question it, or would you pick him at twenty million? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe some of you guys would. That would be great. Oh, okay, right. Another hypothetical, Fran. If Erling Haaland is twenty million. Is there, are you still, is there a chance you pick him at that price? Yeah, I think there's no no chance that I pick him at that price. No chance whatsoever? <laughs> no, I mean, he, he might be, if I, if there was really no great games for Liverpool and maybe let's say a Kane with Spurs um, yeah. or a Kane with United, but yeah, uh, unless they really have terrible fixtures lined up, then it's, 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 it's really tough to see me going for Haaland at 20. <laughs> Fair enough. I think that's fair. All right, let's finish off the video with a quick fire round of some other players. Some of you guys have been sending me these players via Twitter of the players that you guys are interested in. So, uh, yeah, if you want to get involved in future videos, make sure you are following at FPLMate on Twitter. Uh, and, yeah, we'll uh, we'll create some content together. Uh, so, yeah, just going to run them through. Uh, Fran, what we're going to do, I'm going to give you a player name. You tell me their price, maybe one line uh, as to why, but very, very short. Keep it brief, and then I'll I'll finish it off with my prediction. So let's start off with a couple of Arsenal players that we haven't spoken about yet. So first of all, Saka. 9.5, the penalty taker for Arsenal. Okay, fine. I've gone for 8.5. 9.5, that's so, <laughs> so expensive. But yeah, top scoring midfielders should be priced that way. Uh, Martin Erdegaard. Nine. Nine. So same as Martinelli. Who are you picking out of those three at those prices? I think I might have to go with Odegaard just because more minutes. Okay. Yeah. No. That's uh, that's fair enough. Um, Ollie Watkins. Eight. Eight. Yeah. Absolutely agree with you on that one. Uh, should see him uh, to have a similar kind of FPL journey to Bamford and Dominic Calvert Lewin, where they hike up his price, uh, but maybe he flops after. Let's see about that one. Um, Brian and Bumo. Ooh, seven, just to match Tony's price this season. Okay, I've gone for six point five because I think they will still consider Tony. Uh, but yeah, certainly a player we want to be looking at. I think uh, next up, uh, David Raya. Five million, just to show that he really was the best keeper this year. Yeah, five million. Uh, yeah. Uh, if he moves to a uh, Tottenham Hotspur, are we picking him at five? Yeah, I think so. I think you'd have to go for him as well. Yeah, I think that could be interesting. Uh, Inciso of Brighton. Ooh, depends whether he's a midfielder or forward, but I think six. Six as a midfielder? Are you taking him at that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be a really nice price. He could be like this year's, like Mitamar or March or whoever else. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got for five point five on him though. Next up, Unkunku of Chelsea. I mean, nine point five. They usually do price um, these premiums coming from abroad quite quite well, and he's a big big marquee signing, the Bundesliga top scorer. 
yeah, they, yeah, they absolutely do. I'm going to go for nine million uh, for him, but I agree he's going to be very expensive. Uh, a lot of people are going to be sucked in and and bring him in immediately. Uh, I, I'm not sure if if he's game week one material. Fran, quick word on that one. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's a lot that Chelsea have to prove to to us FPL managers really after this season. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, perhaps Chelsea fans feel uh, a similar kind of situation. All right, next up, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold. 7.5, almost like every season passed. Yeah, yeah, that's a quite easy one. 7.5 for me as well. It's quite an easy one because uh, FPL seem to like be pretty convinced by this one that he's a 7.5 million <laughs> player. Um there has been sp- like like talk in the past about pushing him up to 8 million, uh but we're not we don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I agree with your sort of argument about why Holland will still be priced, you know, at 13. And and for that reason, I don't think they're going to push the defenders any higher than 7.5. Fair enough. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne. Ooh, I'm going to actually go for a price drop here with an 11. 11 million. Well, um, Fran, I have to tell you, for the first time in this video, I'm predicting higher than you at uh, okay. 11.5. So, yeah, okay. Um yeah, I'm not really sure. I, like this is a this is a bit of a weird one, uh, but whatever the case, I don't think anyone's really going to be able to afford to have De, De Bruyne in their team, really, uh, with yeah. the likes of Kane, Holland, Salah. Um, in terms of premiums, would you agree that that De Bruyne will be kind of fourth choice on your list of preferences? Yeah, I think so. It's tough because he always ends up getting rotated a bit more than usual compared to the other premiums. So it's it's always been hard to sort of find a time to to own De Bruyne. Yeah, absolutely. It could be an interesting differential, if nothing else. Uh, mm-hmm. Bruno Fernandes. I've gone for 10 here. Um, just just a less than stellar season compared to the years past. But this United team is still strong. And ultimately, he's he's the penalty taker as it stands. Yep, yep, agreed. 10 million for me as well. So all in agreement there. Uh, Alexander Isak. I've gone for eight here, but really depends on the, that sort of competition for that central forward spot with uh, Wilson. Mm, yeah, agreed. Eight million for me as well. And uh, finally, Hyunmin Son. Ooh, I've gone for a price decrease, quite a big one, and dropping him to nine. Oh, that is a significant decrease. I mean, I've gone for 10, but Son at nine. So you put Son in a similar bracket to... Martinelli and Rashford were actually a little bit cheaper than Rashford, a little bit cheaper than Saka. Is, yeah, is, would you say that they're kind of comparable players these days? Yeah, I mean, Sun's actually had a much worse season th- than the players that you mentioned. And I, I just think that with Spurs also not really posting such great attacking numbers and, and actually Kane hogging up really all the goals uh, as things stand, if Kane stays, I, I can't see why Sun would be priced as highly. Okay, and if, if Kane goes and we see a Son at 9 million, 9.5, if we see him somewhere around there, would you be interested in him at all? Absolutely. I mean, he'd be the penalty taker there, you know, probably stay on free kicks. And yeah, he would definitely be someone that I'd be considering at many points in the season. Yeah, maybe maybe even above Martinelli and, and Rashford. Like, if and again, in a straight pick between you have a choice between i don't know Erdegaard, like you mentioned earlier rashford mm. and shulman son in a spurs team without kane game week one anything Ooh. telling you to pick son yeah I, I i think i would probably go with son if he had good fixtures but i, I do think spurs are probably the the worst team out of the three that you mentioned just based on what we saw last year and um with the new coach of course you've got to weigh that up as well yeah Yep, absolutely. Of course, Son could leave Spurs as well, and then everything is um, yeah pointless. <laughs> but um, yeah, so there are all of the uh, players. That's our predictions for these players. You have to let us know what you think uh, about uh, our predictions. Do you think we've got it right? Do you think we've got it wrong? Uh, and if there's any other players you have predictions for prices, again, leave your predictions in the comments. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching today. Uh, Please do go check out uh, FPL Fran on YouTube. Um, I'll leave a link at the top of the description. Uh, Where else can they find you, Fran? And what can we look forward to uh, seeing on your channel this upcoming season? Yeah, so as you said, you can find me on on both Twitter and YouTube as FPL Fran. Um, My main series on YouTube is actually a cheat sheet series where I actually look at all these sort of assets in FPL um, ranked by price and sort of I tier them 
Um, very much kind of like your, your tier list early this season, but it's sort of rolling week to week. So you kind of get my thoughts on where I think the midfielders, the forwards, even the defenders and, and goalkeepers are going week to week. Yeah, and uh, your videos, of course, with your cheat sheets, they're also a little bit more kind of in-depth and in detail, which I really, really do appreciate. So, guys, genuinely, it's really, really good content over there. We're all going to be looking for uh, FPL YouTubers to follow this season. I would not have, um, I would not platform FPL Fran on the FPL Make channel if I didn't seriously think he was, uh, you know, a fantastic creator who really, really is upcoming. You've been going for how many years now, Fran? So I've got I've gone for two years so far. Um, so a lot more to come, of course. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, and uh, his channel is growing and growing over the years. So clearly, some uh, people are taking notice, and uh, I think you guys should take notice as well if you haven't done already. Uh, but guys, we are going to leave it there. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. Do drop a like, uh, of course, if you did enjoy this one. Uh, any final words, Fran? No, just thank you so much for inviting me on, and I hope you guys have a wonderful FPL season ahead. Thank you very much for joining us today. Really do appreciate it, bro. Uh, but yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, once again, looking forward to more 2023-24 content coming very, very soon to your screens. Uh, but until then, thank you so much for watching once again. And I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.